Have you ever felt all choked up? Have you ever been nervous to present and your voice starts to tremble? Have you ever been on the verge of tears and felt a lump in your throat? Feelings involve physiological changes in the body. These phrases are physical descriptions of emotions expressed here in the larynx, otherwise known as the voice box. Emotions and stress have a noticeable effect on our physical performance. When I was a young girl, I took ballet classes, and I had a very strict Hungarian ballet teacher named Mrs. Barron. She used to walk around the classroom with a stick and hit my legs to make sure that my leg was straight and my toe was pointed. We would shift from the bar to our floor work, and Mrs. Barron would reposition herself in front of the mirror, looking out at the classroom with a stick in hand. We were instructed to run across the floor and then leap into a grand jeté. It was my turn. I started my runs, and the moment I leapt into the air, the teacher would bang her stick, and inevitably, I choked. Let me back up a little bit and tell you who I am, what I do, and why I find this all so interesting. I'm a medical speech pathologist who specializes in treating the voice, as well as breathing, swallowing, and cough disorders. I have the privilege of working in New York City with a wide range of patients. The Body Keeps the Score is a title of a book written by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. This is what I see on a daily basis with my patients. Unshared pain has to go somewhere. I see the patients who carry their stress and emotion here. Larynx, voice box. The voice box or larynx sits in the front of the throat on top of your airway with your food tube or esophagus behind it. Okay, everyone, let's find your larynx. Take your hand, place it gently on the front of your neck. You should feel your Adam's apple. Everybody has one. And now go ahead and swallow. Did you feel that moving up and down? That's your larynx. It moves up and down and out of the way when we swallow to keep us safe. The vocal folds sit right behind there. You have two of them, and they conveniently make a V for voice. The vocal folds are super tiny. Go ahead and look at your, your thumbnail. Your vocal folds are the approximate length of your thumbnail. Unless, of course, you're wearing acrylic nail tips. <laughs> Fun fact, your vocal folds vibrate 120 to 220 times per second when talking, and up to 1,400 times per second for the highest opera repertoire. Your larynx or voice box has three main functions. The first is your vocal folds come together and they vibrate like this when we talk. They open when we breathe, and are essentially the gates that let air in and out of our body. Most important, the vocal folds come together when we cough. This is to protect our airway. You may be surprised to learn that this is a place in the body where stress is held. I am not. Most are unaware of all that occurs right here. It's the crossroads of breathing, eating, and communication. Think about it. Breathing, it's what keeps us alive. Eating, one of the main things we do when we get together. And communication, from saying hello to I love you, and even getting a chance to share messages that change the world. So how do emotions affect the larynx? Well, research has shown that emotions in the larynx are intrinsically related. The vocal tract has rich and a complex nerve supply, making it very sensitive. It receives input from both the central and the autonomic nervous systems. The limbic system in the brain is the master of emotions and communicates with the nerves in the larynx. This helps explain why we are able to recognize when our loved ones are upset with us from only subtle changes in facial expression and tone of voice. 
Emotions and stress cause the body to tighten. That includes muscles of the neck, the shoulders, the back, the chest, and even the vocal folds. This can have a direct effect on how we sound, how we breathe, and can even cause a chronic cough. It's not easy for people to change these behaviors on their own, or I wouldn't have a job. I evaluate and treat patients who have very real symptoms that negatively impact their lives. By the time patients come to see me, they're typically frustrated and exhausted as they've seen multiple medical professionals searching for the cause of their problem. The interesting thing is that these symptoms often occur in otherwise healthy individuals. So what is the cause? More often than not, it's stress. What do you think about when you're asked about a stressful event? Maybe divorce or death? The stressor does not have to be negative. It can be positive. You can be stressed from having a baby, getting married, or moving. A crucial consideration is the timing of these events. This is because the physical effects of stress or how it plays out in the body may not catch up with us for months or years. The body keeps the score. Looking back over the past year, especially this year, most people have been a bit stressed. This doesn't have to occur from one event, like a pandemic. It can be a slow build of pressure or a general feeling of responsibility overload. Most people are not aware of the physical and emotional stress that simply comes from living life. Emotional reactions from stress include anxiety, depression, physical reactions, things like headache and pain. These symptoms are often ignored or attributed to other causes. We humans are great at justifying symptoms. Only when they seem to persist or cause concern do we seek help. Unfortunately, by that time, the body has done a good job at compensating and creating dysfunctional patterns affecting voice and respiration. Let's take a dive into how stress affects the voice. Well, there's the classic stage fright, or how about you get up enough courage to ask somebody on a date, and the moment you go to open your mouth, nothing comes out. Maybe you feel a sore throat, but you're not sick. Or you notice voice changes, become hoarse or tired, simply from using your voice. Working with the voice is not only paying attention to the words that people say, but listening to the voice and what I hear in the voice. What's the quickest way to know how someone's feeling? Yes, you can look them in the eyes, but listen to their voice. If I ask someone how they're doing and they respond to me with, I'm okay, we all know they are not okay. We know that under stress, the muscles in and around the voice box and the vocal folds themselves tighten. If this is prolonged, it may cause a disorder called muscle tension dysphonia. Dysphonia simply meaning difficulty with the voice. It can vary in severity and can cause disruptions in personal and work life. The effects of muscle tension dysphonia include fatigue, hoarseness, pitch problems, loss of range, and pain with use. So how about our breathing? Patients come in to us reporting difficulty with breathing and shortness of breath. This is after they've seen a lung specialist who's ruled out any other causes. I'd like to try something. On the count of three, I'd like everybody in the audience to take a breath in and let it out. One, two, Three. What I just observed was a collective wave of bodies rising and falling. <sighs> I describe a breath like that as tense, upper body focused. This is not a relaxed breath. 
nor a breath conducive to voice use. The patients I see suffer from shortness of breath because they use this tense upper body breathing pattern to an extreme. Their stress causes a tight voice box, which ultimately makes it difficult to breathe. So, we talked about voice, we talked about breathing. What about that chronic cough? One of the most interesting groups that I work with suffer from chronic persistent cough, or throat clear. This is a cough that's persisted longer than eight weeks and continues despite full medical workup and treatment. Some people have been coughing for decades. You may know some of them. In addition to coughing, this group also has difficulty with their voice and breathing. Their voice boxes have become overly sensitive, reactive, or dramatic. It is normal to cough. If you're choking, please cough. With chronic cough, people are coughing when there is no need. They're coughing in response to cold air, perfume, and even laughing. I've had patients whose cough is so severe, they cough to the point of vomiting. Historically, chronic cough has been treated with medication. These medications have serious side effects. But I specialize in treating patients without medication. We work on training people out of their cough by using alternate strategies. Our research has shown about 80% of our patients are improved with therapy alone. An important part of working with this group is asking them about what was happening around the time the cough started. Most people report a significant emotional or stressful event occurring around the onset of symptoms. One of the more extreme examples of stress and emotion affecting the larynx are the patients who worked at the World Trade Center site on 9-11. There is a large number of this cohort who experienced severe laryngeal symptoms that were not present prior to that day. The emotional trauma is essentially manifested in the voice box. Effective therapy requires treatment of the body and the mind. Just as treating the stress helps relax the larynx, relaxing the larynx helps relieve the stress, which brings me to all of you. Take a moment and think about a situation where you were upset, emotional, or choked up, a time when your breathing got shallow or your body got tight, maybe before a job interview, or hearing about a new COVID strain, or perhaps when calling your mother-in-law? <laughs> now, hold that thought. I'm going to share with you a way that you can calm your breathing, relax your throat, and quiet your mind. Begin by closing your lips so they are slightly touching. Some people find it more relaxing to close the eyes. Take in a gentle, quiet breath through your nose, not a hard or deep breath, just like this. Then move right into an exhale through pursed lips. It's as if you're trying to flicker the flame of a candle. And then move right back into a gentle inhale through the nose. The exhale should be longer than the inhale, and they should both be silent. With each exhale, think about relaxing your shoulders, your chest, your throat, and even your belly. Let it go. Go ahead and give it two or three more breaths. Nice. So, next time your emotions are affecting your voice box, give this a try.